Detective Johnny is back for another edition of Celebrities Getting Exposed for Living Fake Lives. Today on the show we'll be covering everything from singers faking their performances to celebrities we once thought were nice turning out to be some big creeps or just plain mean. But first if you could do us a big favor and please tap that like button we'd really appreciate it. And with that out of the way, let's begin. Coming number 10, James Franco. When we think of James Franco we usually think of the characters in film and TV that he's best known for. And the dangerous thing with James is that when he interacts with fans he realizes just how famous he is and therefore believes that he can get away with a lot of terrible stuff. For example, the time that he decided to slide into the DMs of a fan that was underage. A girl from a small Scottish town was on a trip to New York City when she ended up getting to meet Franco at the Broadway show called Of Mice and Men. After tagging him in an Instagram video that is no longer available, James began flirting with her through the app. Lucy didn't believe that it was actually James Franco, so she inquired about proving his identity, which he did with no issue. He was very aggressive with trying to get this fan into his bed, which really changes the way that you see him. I mean, asking if he should get a hotel hotel room right after asking if she was single is just nuts. Then to see her tell him that she would come back to NYC when she turned 18 only made him persist, which was really gross and proved that he had crossed a, a number of lines. In number 9, Gwyneth Paltrow. Back when Trump was president, he told 3M to stop distributing their masks to Canada and Latin America so that Americans could have them. The reason why they said for the average person not to buy masks at the time was due to there already being a shortage and most of them were needed for healthcare workers. Hence the government just telling you to stay home instead, but try telling that to the owner of Goop. Paltrow posted this selfie saying, en route to Paris, paranoid, prudent, panicked, placid, pandemic, propaganda? Paltrow's just going to go ahead and sleep with this thing on the plane. I've already been in this movie, stay safe, don't shake hands, wash hands frequently. And here's where it all began to backfire. Paltrow threw on the mask and protective gear for another Instagram post about going to a local farmer's market. To which Dr. Jen Gunter replied, Why do you need gloves and a mask? Isn't your immune boosting supplement that you were promoting at the start of the flu season effective? I mean, kind of caught lying there. In a break, K-pop. Back when everyone was in lockdown for the first time, we all braced ourselves as April Fool's Day approached. No one wanted to be pranked because it felt as if we were already in the middle of some sick joke. The last person we would ever have imagined trying to pull off a prank though was a K-pop star, that's for sure. South Korean singer and actor Kim Jae Yoong decided it would be hilarious to tell his followers that he had been infected by the virus as a result of his negligence. He goes on to say that a person's individual actions can have such a big impact on a society as a whole. Not wrong, but okay. Then he decided to apologize to all of those who have been infected by him, closing out with, My foolish judgment to live as though it couldn't happen to me is why I am like this today. The quote unquote prank didn't stop there though as he continued in another post saying that he was currently hospitalized and to make matters worse he even said that it wasn't an April Fool's joke, adding that his family and friends are getting sick and dying even. So he says all of that and then at the end of the day, literally at the end of April Fool's, he just goes, it was all a joke, April Fools, ha, I made you all think I had some terrible disease that was spreading around the world, how funny. Not too long after that though, the entire fan base took over social media to have a hashtag Jayoung is over party, and rightfully so. Coming in number 7, Ellen DeGeneres. When the pandemic happened and everyone went into lockdown, Ellen had a choice. She could have saved her staff and allowed them to work from home, but instead she bailed on them and hired an independent company instead. This clearly did not sit well with her former staffers and thus unleashed a litany of complaints about the star. Not only that, but we had a full Twitter thread of just negative interactions in general with Ellen that led many of us to believe that she was nowhere near the queen of nice like she wanted us to think. For example, the poor waitress who nearly lost her job after Ellen complained to management that her nail polish was chipped during service. On top of that, her comments about her 20 27 million dollar home feeling like jail wasn't viewed as comical but rather a flaunting of privilege in these uncertain times. Something that's both unnecessary and made people realize how truly out of touch these celebrities are. The truth about Ellen though is that she has been involved in the world of branding and celebrity imagery for so long that now her new hot takes are suddenly nowhere near relatable to the general public. Coming number 6, Robin Thicke. This one is next level embarrassing for everyone involved. His summer smash hit called Blurred Lines certainly started to explain his real life. Robin was happily married to wife Paula Patton, for whom he shares a son with. However, in 2013 he threw his entire marriage under the bus as a photo emerged of the singer getting a little too personal with a female fan who was later identified as a socialite. In the photo taken, you can see that the mirror behind Lana and Robin catches him with his hand going right up her dress. And the photo appeared to have been taken at an MTV VMA after party in New York City, which also just so happened to be the night that Robin had done his controversial performance with Miley Cyrus. So you know when he got home he had a lot of apologizing and a lot of explaining to do. Coming number 5, Lindsay Lohan. 
Whenever I think about Lindsay Lohan, my first thought always goes to her just being an actor. However, in 2018, she was trying to act like some sort of savior and really got exposed. While Lindsay Lohan was in Moscow, she posted a live video to Instagram where she told her fans that she spotted two young boys that she believed were human trafficking victims. In the video, Lohan approaches this family of what she says are Syrian refugees sitting on a sidewalk under some blankets. Now, the fact that she wants to help this family is nice, but what's not nice is the fact that she also had to live stream this on her Instagram. Lohan tries to offer them a hotel room and suggests that the boys could even come back with her to watch movies on her TV or computer. And when the mother refuses to let her children just leave with Lindsay Lohan, the actress says to the mother, You should not have them on the floor. You should be a hardworking woman and you should be doing what you can for your children so they have a better life. The family then tries to walk away from this odd confrontation, but Lohan continues to follow them and even starts accusing the mother of trafficking her own children. Which leads us to this really embarrassing moment for Lindsay Lohan. After Lindsay tries to just run off with one of these children, the mother spins around and just cracks Lohan in the face, knocking her to the ground. Coming number four, Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey can definitely sing. There's no question about that. However, this does not make her immune from copping out the odd time and lip syncing from time to time. Right off the top, you can tell that she is lip syncing in this performance, but when the music transitions and she comes down to the main stage, the sound tech plays the wrong song. I don't know if this was just an error or if someone was really trying to expose Mariah like that, but damn. My favorite part comes later on after she tells the crowd that she picked the wrong song. As she's talking, like mid sentence, you can hear her trademark whistle. Little note. I'm gonna say let the audience sing, okay? I mean, I had to include her in this list because apparently she got paid $3.5 million to lip sync her New Year's Eve performance. I guess you could say more than one ball was dropped that night. Speaking of lip syncing, coming in number three, Ashley Simpson. This video still gives me secondhand embarrassment. Truly, truly does. I, I just can't stop talking about it because it, it's amazing. In this video, you can see all of this confusion when Ashley realizes that the track started playing before she even had the microphone up to her face. So then she just awkwardly dances instead. And at that point, you can't even really salvage the performance. I mean, it's called Saturday Night Live for a reason. So she just did a little dance, said that she was sorry, and then blamed her band for playing the wrong song. And then it was all quick cut to commercial from there. During an interview several years later, she was asked about this and here's what Ashley had to say. Um, what happened there was I had a vocal problem. I had two nodes beating against each other and I woke up and I had no voice and then I should have said no I will not go on. I will not do this. Coming number two, Selena Gomez. This is perhaps every musician's worst nightmare and it happened to Selena Gomez. At the 2013 Jingle Ball in Los Angeles, Selena had some pretty serious sound issues happening while she was performing. The irony in this situation though was when she was singing the line I got no regrets and then boom her lip syncing was exposed. Immediately after, while she's pausing with the mic lowered from her face, the vocal track sings on and shocks the 20,000 fans in attendance. And if that wasn't bad enough, she went on to alienate her fans even more by dropping a very audible F-bomb. The big WTF came after she ripped out her earpiece and then tried to continue, but when she couldn't get back into the song, her mic picked up the last moment of anger. Last but certainly least in our number one spot, Michael Richards. Michael Richards is known for his role as Kramer on Seinfeld, and he's really funny on that show because he literally had Jerry Seinfeld and Larry David writing for him. I mean, two of the greatest comedic writers in, in our time, really. Although when that show ended, Kramer thought that he could just transition into stand-up comedy and be just as funny. Unfortunately, when his set was not going well at the Laugh Factory in Hollywood, he completely lost his mind and just buried his career. I guess someone heckled him and then he went on a tirade by screaming racial slurs and attacking the audience. It was so bad that a large majority of the crowd just got up and left the club in the middle of his act. He was never able to redeem himself after this racist rant and it will serve as a stark reminder that Kramer was never funny. <laughs> Fight me in the comments. Every time I see this backdrop I think about Kramer f up. <laughs> But folks, that has been the Top 10 Celebrities Exposed for Living Fake Lies Part 3. And before we get out of here, I'm going to check out some of your comments from the video titled OnlyFans Reverses Decision to Ban Adult Content. Elizabeth Buchanan says, Yeah, I don't know how OnlyFans thought they'd be able to do this without going under or major backlash. I'm pretty sure most of the internet knows OnlyFans for adult stuff, not kid-friendly content. 
very true. You can't really brand yourself as one thing and be like, yeah, we don't do that anymore. I saw something really funny. A lot of people were commenting this, but it's like KFC being like, mm, we don't want to serve chicken. It's all beef now. Sarah Rideout says, this makes me wonder if this was just a publicity stunt. I mean, I don't think so. I think what happened was they, they were trying to they were trying to partner with the banks in a way that would make them happy because money, really. And then they must have saw their analytics just go woo, straight down because I guarantee it, so many people unsubscribed. So I don't think it was a publicity stunt. Bob Bob says, this was just a way for the banks and elites to say, see, we go after both sides and to create the appearance of being impartial. The banks will go after anyone that's gonna hurt their money or think hurt their money. I don't think that they choose sides. The only side they choose is cash. Storm King 989 says, they shot themselves in the foot and then backtracked on their dumb decision of kicking out their top money makers on their platform. Oh yeah, I'm, I guarantee this is gonna be taught for the next little while to anyone starting a new business. Is don't do what OnlyFans did, don't do what Tumblr did, cause you will lose your fan base. M says, Johnny has a great speaking voice and I appreciate his commentary. Keep up the good work, Johnny. Oh, thank you so much, M. I really appreciate that. It's, what a lovely comment. But guys, that is the end of today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I've been your host, Johnny Rogers, and until next time, stay classy, YouTube, or at least try.